All right. So um, on the screen, I just want to point out that when to access the MLS, it's exactly the same URL that you've always been using, which is centraljerseymls.com. And your login and password have not changed. They're the same. So we can... Um, the other thing I'd like to also point out is our support email and phone number. We pride ourselves on our help desk. That's also on the back of that little handout that you've got. So, um, you know, don't be afraid to pick up the phone and give us a call if you have any issues. Um, we are available Monday through Saturday. So from 9 to 8 p.m., 9 a.m. to 8 p.m., uh, Monday to Friday, that's your time. And from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. every Saturday. So please feel free to call. Okay, let's go right at it. So this should look familiar to you. This has not changed. You will log in just like you always do. But when you get to the next page, you'll see there's a new button there called Rapatoni MLS. That's the one you will click on now to go into the MLS. And when you do so, this is where you'll be landed. And we've advertised the help desk right here as well, so it's no excuse to know the numbers. Right there. Right, this is your, your sort of personal dashboard. It's the home page of the MLS. So I just want to give you a quick orientation. The top here is what we call our message banner. It's a little hard to see, but if the, you can have multiple messages on there. If you just click, they will be postings that Rapatoni does, maybe some tips and tricks. And occasionally this, the MLS will put some notices up there about upcoming events and stuff like that. So that's just a form of communication. Below that, we have our modules. Now the idea here is that there's a module to get you to all of the areas of the MLS that you tend to use the most. And are things that you're more interested in. So for example, there's a 24 hour market watch module that lets you know what's been going on in the MLS in the last 24 hours. It's completely interactive. If you hover over, Mackenzie is showing you as you hover over each of these pie charts, there's a number. If you clicked on that, it would take you in to see those listings. Uh, we also have the pie chart broken down, activity broken down based on listing status. Now, some of these modules have an option regarding how they're laid out, and this is a good example. For this particular module, you can show it in a chart view, or you can show it in a list view. So if you change it, it will just rearrange that module into a list view. If you find that easier to read, then just change it and it's yours. Another helpful module is the recent searches. Our system will remember the last 20 searches you did. So you don't even if you forgot to save them, you want to go back to them, the last 20 will be here. And you can see it tells you what type of search it was. And if you hover over the <coughs> actual name, it will actually show you what the search criteria was that you, that, you, that you were running. And if you click it, it will take you right to that search. Come on in. Oh, you got other people? Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, there's also your saved searches, your saved talk sheets. There's also a support center module that from time to time will have new vid tutorial videos you can run and links to our help, which we'll cover a little later on. Now, this screen is completely customizable. You can collapse these modules. Like this, this module here is a long module. You don't want to scroll all the way through. If you click this little icon here, it will collapse it out of the way. And then when you need to get back to it, you can just open it up again. You can move modules around. You can take modules from the bottom and move them to the top. So let's say, for example, doesn't matter, pick anyone. Just hover that middle icon and drag the module to the area you want it to be. And just drop it so you can move these all around. You can get rid of a module. If it's something you never use, you can turn it off and just hit the X. And it will say, sure, you want to remove this? And you can go ahead. Now, let's say you remove something you didn't mean to remove. You can get it back again by going to the settings icon up here. It looks like a little cog. It'll bring you to the settings, and here are all your modules, and you can see this is the one we turned, we, got, we removed, so to turn it back on again, we simply turn it on, okay? So you have total control. A couple of other things you can do here, relate, relating to the layout of the home page, and the very first item is the theme. So as you can see, we are displaying the home page in a dark theme. Not, that's not everybody's favorite way to look at it. So we also have a light theme and all you need to do to change it is just click on that menu, select the other option and then when we hit save, now it's in light. 
So if this is your preferred way, just leave it that way. Okay, you can also have multiple dashboards. So to, if you would like to create more than one homepage, if you go up to the home icon, you'll see that just below it, it says create a new dashboard. So an example might be maybe you want all of the modules relating to your contacts and prospects. You'd like to have them on their own page. This is an example. So Mackenzie is typing, giving it a name, and then she'll come down here and she'll choose what modules she wants on this dashboard. So what she's doing, she's turning off all the ones that have no relationship to prospects. Let's get rid of the agent tools as well. I'll just stay with four. Now there's one other option on here and that's the dashboard layout. There's two layouts, there's tiled and stacked. We're going to use the tiled layout for this. We'll hit save and we have now created a brand new dashboard and the only thing on this dashboard are those four modules that she selected. Notice that these modules are all the same size. That's the tiled layout. It, it lays out your modules all in even sizes. If we go back to our home page, remember we've got two dashboards now, we'll go back to the home page. This is in the stacked layout. And what a stacked layout will do is it will move the modules to fit the content. So let's just change that to a tiled layout so you can see the difference. We'll go back up to settings, change it to tiled, hit save, <coughs> And you see now all of your recent searches, it's all in even. So it's just a preference. You can do whatever you like. We can go back and change it to stacked. Now, when you create multiple dashboards, if you have a dashboard that you would prefer to land on every time you log into the system, you can favorite it. What you do is you go to the menu and there's a little star beside each of the dashboard names. If you click the star, that makes it your favorite and the system will now go to that one the next time you log in. Okay, let's make our home page the favorite, okay? And then if you want to get rid of one that you've created, you just simply select it, open up, <coughs> open up the settings and you can delete it. So it's all terribly customizable. Once you get your preferences, you can set this the way you like it. All right, let's talk about navigating around the MLS. So you know what the home page is now. I want to draw your attention to the very top bar, this gray bar. We call that the, the menu bar. No matter where you are in the MLS system, that bar will always be there. So you could be looking at the detail of a listing, looking at search results, whatever that bar will always be there because what it's allowing you to do is no matter where you are in the MLS, you can access all the other parts of the MLS. So we'll quickly give, go through that. The very first um, item is the searches menu. So we, uh, we offer a variety of different search templates to allow you to search for listings, open houses, broker tours, etc. We'll cover some of them today. And they're all, they all can be found on the searches menu. The next one over is the listings menu. This is where you're going to go if you need to add a new listing, copy a listing, or view and revise your own listings. That would be off this menu here. The next item over is the tax uh, link. Now, that's not a drop down, it's simply a button that if you click it, it will take you into Remind, who is your new tax vendor. And once you're in Remind, you can do tax searches. Next one over is are your cards. We can click on that if you like. So I believe you have the same thing in Matrix. Uh, you can take listings, put them into listing carts, and then go back and access the listings later. So here's just an example of some carts we set up earlier, and you can access them from the carts menu. Next one over is the contacts and prospects. So this is where you're going to go to access your contacts and set up your auto emailing. We will be covering that this after the break. Next one over is the links menu. All this is is just a quick way to get to your third party links. If you look on the home page, you do have a module that has links to all of your third parties like List Hub, Transaction Desk, uh, Showing Time. Um, that's on the home page. If you're somewhere else in the system and you need to go to those third parties, you can click on the links button and the very first item is single sign-on. 
Next one over is the admin menu. We will be referring back to this menu a few times today because this is where you go to do setup for the MLS. This is where you would go to set up your preferences and stuff like that, and we'll cover a few of these today. <laughs> And the first one I want to cover is the modify your profile, which is the second item down. This is where you would go if you needed to upload a picture of yourself. Now, the fact that it says profile means somebody else is going to see this at some point. So, um, why don't we do that first, actually. Let's go to view your profile, the very first link. This is what other agents and your clients and members of the public will see if they click a link to your name. So you want to make sure this is correct. So the first thing I would do when you get home is go back, pull up, modify your profile, view it the way other people would see it. Just make sure everything's good. We, all, we offer this area here for you to put in a little bio about yourself. That's not compulsory, but you might want to just advertise something about yourself. The picture, very straightforward, there's a link up there. For uploading a picture okay we don't have to we've already got one uploaded and then if we scroll down here's all your main membership information now don't freak out the fact that your home home address is there nobody else sees that only you but you should look and make sure this data is correct if it's not you will need to contact the association so they can make the changes last but not least if you are multilingual you speak more than one language you might want to advertise the fact you can do that, click this little icon here, and just check off the languages you speak, and that will be advertised on your profile. Okay, so let's get out of here. Well, if you make any changes, remember to hit the save button, and we're gonna go back to the home page. Now, today we can't possibly cover everything in the MLS, and of course you'll notice it's not a hands-on training, and I know some of you feel probably wish it was, you, we're not expecting you to remember everything that we're teaching you today. Our goal here is to give you an idea of what the system is capable of doing so that you know what you can do. And then when you're ready to learn it, we have a whole plethora of help, including our very competent help desk. But if you want to teach yourself any of this stuff, under the help menu, there's online help, which is textual. You can type in text and find answers. And then we have the learning center. If you click here, you'll see that we have a whole library of little tutorials, and I say little, most of them are not more than three minutes long, that are covering everything we're talking about today. So when you go home and you're ready to start learning it, you can go in here. So for example, if you type in homepage, you'll see that all the videos relating to everything we showed you today is right there. Within 10 minutes, you can review everything, okay? So that's the learning center. So if you don't remember anything else about what I tell you today, just remember at the help menu, okay? <laughs> Further down, we also have a series of recorded webinars. Now, webinars are obviously a lot longer than three minutes. These are in-depth <laughs> webinars about different features. So if you want to learn more, you can click there and go through them. The one thing I do want to point out is the next item down, which is a getting started guide. If you feel more comfortable having a little manual in your hand that's going to walk you through things, the getting started guide is a good one to print out. It's not going to cover every aspect of the MLS, but it's about 21 pages long and will get you started. It will talk about how to do quick searches. It'll give you the basics. So that's, if you want to just print that out. There were too many people coming to classes, we couldn't do all those, but you can print your own out. Okay. Um, there's also a support center option on here. And the reason I want to bring that to your attention is there's two ways to contact our help desk, obviously picking up the phone and calling them, but you can also email us. If you click on the contact support button here, it lets you quickly type in an email with a question. We also do repeat the phone number up here if you want to just call. If you type an email through here, the system, our help desk will, will answer within 24 hours. When they answer back, your e you'll get an email with the answer back but we also keep a record of it, which is kind of nice because all of your previous questions are stored in this next tab. We don't have any, but let's just say you'd sent in various emails to our home desk and you remember that we answered something, but you couldn't remember the answer. Three weeks from now, you can go back in here, find your original question, view the answer. So we keep track of all that. Okay, all right. 
So that's the help menu. The next area here is our speed search. I'll come back to that momentarily. And then we have one other icon I want to make sure you know about, and that's the open a new tab icon. What that allows you to do is open up multiple sessions of the MLS. So let's go back to carts. So just to give you an example, let's say you're in here, you're working with your listings, you get a phone call and somebody wants to know something about another listing. And you don't want to lose where you're at, particularly if you're inputting a listing. What you can do, stay where you are here, click this little icon up here, and it opens a new session of the MLS. Now you can go and do a different type of search, find out what you need to find out. When you close that tab, you're right back where you started from. And you can have multiple sessions. You can open up 10 of them if you want. It's entirely up to you. So keep that one in mind. It'll come in handy when you want to multitask. Okay, now I mentioned earlier on we've got many different flavors of searches that you can do, but one of them is a speed search. So we'll cover that one first. This is designed to be just that, a quick and dirty search, and a great example of that is if you're just looking up a listing number, this is the easiest way to do it, is just type it into this box up here. If you're searching for multiple listing numbers, just put a comma in between. Once you type it in, you just have to hit the let enter or this little eyeglass, either way, and it will pull up the results. Another good use of the speed search is looking for an address. So we will type in an address. Now, it's a little hard to see from there, but as Mackenzie's typing, this green box here is actually telling her how many listings are matching what she's looking for. As it happens, there's just one that matches what we've typed in. So when we hit enter now, because it only had one listing, it goes directly into the listing detail so that you can get right in there and see that listing. You can do more robust searches if you want. So for example, maybe somebody has said they want to live in Chesterfield. So we're going to type in the word Chesterfield. And we've got 72 listings. Let's narrow this down a bit. Let's just narrow it down to active listings. So what we're doing now is we're putting in a different piece of criteria. When you're putting in a different piece of criteria, you have to separate it with a semicolon. Now, again, don't worry about remembering all this. I'm going to show you where you can look this up later. I'm just showing you what, you do, what we're doing here. And it narrowed it down to five listings. And if you press enter, it will take us down to those five listings. Now, what I want to point out about this type of search, if you search on something like a, a name, it'll look, it'll assume you're looking for an address. So it will find anywhere the word Chesterfield is, if it's in the street name, the area name, the complex name, the um, city name, whatever. If, if it's any occasion of um, that <coughs> word Chesterfield, you can see there's area, and I think we have something in the street name, that's what it's finding. You can do much more robust searches if you're so inclined. So we're going to do a different search. Let's say we're looking for residential active listings and we would like at least four bedrooms. So Mackenzie is typing in four plus beds, three to four baths, and we don't want to spend any more than 400,000. So you can do this type of search in the speed search if you wish to. And we found 56 listings. So let's just hit enter and look at those. Now, how did we know what to look for? There's a little question mark to the left of the speed bar. If you click on that, it brings up a help page that walks you through all of those little codes. So you will begin to learn what you need to type to get the right uh, results. So for example, under to search for bedrooms, you can type in BD, you can type in the full word bedroom, you can put in beds. So it tells you all the codes that will work in the speed search. Okay? Alrighty, so that's the speed search. Now, if you're more comfortable with a form search, and most of you probably are, then you probably wouldn't use that to do the more in-depth searching. You'd probably use a form search. And we're going to go